All right, welcome back to another edition of My Top 10. Uh, I've done this a couple of weeks now. These are my top 10 picks based on a certain subject or theme or topic that I decide to come up with that I just feel like talking about. I've done my wish list books that I hope to pick up this year in 2022. I've done my all-time grail books that I also hope to sometime eventually add to my collection. But this week, I've got something a little bit different and just coming up again with one of those themes that uh, I find personally interesting. Hopefully you enjoyed this series and uh, want to see more of this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Uh, keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel. Make sure you check out the live shows we do on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And yeah, if you want to see what this week's topic is, because it's a fun one, just hang on for a few seconds after the intro and I'll be right back with this week's Top 10. All right, so as I tease there in the open this week, I have a sort of a fun list for my top 10. This week, I was racking my brain thinking about what did I want to do? Did I want, I mentioned Moon Knight covers and things like that, I think in the last video, but I decided, you know what? I want to look at those 1980s cartoon comics that I just love. Uh, I love the cartoons. I love the toys. That's the that's when I grew up. So that's the stuff that still scratches me where I itch. So that's the stuff I feel like looking into and talking about. So these are the comic books related on my favorite properties from the 80s. Now, before we get into the top 10, let's get into some of our honorable mentions. Uh, these didn't quite make the list for one reason or another, and I'm going to explain to you why they didn't quite make the cut. So our first honorable mention here, we're going to start off with, again, it's an absolute favorite cartoon of mine. It's a top property that I could pick, but X-Men, the animated series, did not come out in the 80s. So it is disqualified from hitting this list because it came out in the 90s, early 90s, but still outside of the range of uh, what I wanted to make this list about. So. Missing the cut is X-Men Adventures. You can get in the comic book form, which is based off of the X-Men animated series cartoon from the 90s, which, again, is one of my one of my favorites. It's one of the best adaptation cartoons out there. Uh, it adapted a number of great classic X-Men storylines uh, pretty faithfully for all things considered. Uh, I mean, granted, they had to change it a little bit for cartoons, but it is what it is. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. I believe these... Uh, cartoons are all on disney plus or uh it's disney plus maybe it's on hulu it's on one of the streaming services if you have it check it out because uh it's definitely worth a look and this comic book is uh you know has gained interest over the last few uh few months maybe even the last couple of years so keep an eye out for it you might still find it in those dollar bins because there's plenty of them out there they printed pl printed plenty but this is a book that you can see right here sold january 28th for a little over 15 bucks 15 dollars 65 cents with three bids uh, so this is a book that still has interest and one that uh, people will find. So if you could scoop it out of a dollar bin, you might make yourself a couple of bucks or just find yourself a nice, you know, adapted comic book, you know, based off a cartoon that you can just add to your collection for cheap. So again, I'm going to give you some of the pricing on these books, not because I'm telling you to go buy them. I'm just, again, giving you my top 10 list. This is just a personal list of mine. I'd love to hear what your list is. Let me know in the comments what your favorites are. And uh, yeah, let's just have fun talking about the comics, pop culture, cartoons, toys, all that fun stuff. I'm just enjoying the channel and hopefully you guys are as well. But the pricing information is just for a frame of reference, not an endorsement of any kind to say, go spend this kind of money on this book. Because I wouldn't spend 15 bucks for this X-Men comic personally, because I know I can find it in a dollar bin. So I'll just be patient. And I have found a few of these in a dollar bin, and I already have copies. So I'm not spending $15 personally. And I wouldn't suggest you do either, unless you really, really want it. But then again, that's your call. Public service announcement over. Next honorable mention on our list. We are going to talk about a book that I mentioned, I think, in Dollar Bin dig Digging a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the X-Men uh, potentials. And this is Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Now, I believe there's only a one shot. I think this is the only issue that came out of the comic. Kind of, yeah, not really based on the cartoon, but it kind of was. Uh, so this is one, it's first Firestar in this book. So it's definitely a book to keep an eye out for. But it's an honorable mention because even though Spider-Man and his amazing friends is a great cartoon, uh, I'm not counting it because it's based off of comics. So to make a comic based off a cartoon that's based off a comic seems a little bit redundant. So I kind of tried to pull that out 
And I tried to stick with more of the 80s properties that were more based off of toys or they were cartoons first and then adapted to comics. Something more like that, if that makes sense. So we're not going to be covering Spider-Man and his amazing friends in the top 10 list, but it's an honorable mention because I don't want to forget it uh, regardless of anything. And you can see uh, January 25th, buy it now for over 32 bucks for this book because again, it is Firestar's first appearance in this uh, in this issue, I believe. So it is one that people look out for. And even though I usually do two, I decided to do three honorable mentions because I also didn't want to leave DC out of the fun. So on the DC side of things, Super Friends, another great classic cartoon, uh, one that I grew up with. The superpowers action figures were uh, some of my favorites from when I was a kid. And uh, this Super Friends cartoon and comic book, it's again, it's discounted for the same reason Spider-Man and his amazing friends are because they're, they're superheroes based off of comics, turned into cartoons, and then they're making comic books again. It's just too many steps, all you know, cyclical in doing the same thing. So I just took it out of the list. No superheroes, no original comic books readapted into cartoons and comic books in my top 10. So pulling them out. But just so you're aware, Super Friends, these are books you might find on those cheap boxes, and they're even still cheap. Look, two bids, five fifty. You can get a issue one of Super Friends, and this this series I think ran uh, a bunch of issues, so uh, you might find some of these in those uh, dollar bins as you're flipping through. And it's just for fun. I don't think there's any real spec value to the Super Friends comic books, but hey, who knows? Stranger things have happened, right? So with our honorable mentions out of the way, let's get right into the meat and potatoes of our list and start off with our number ten or I shouldn't say our number 10, it's my list. It's my number 10. Just me, my opinion, my choice, my number 10 is an action figure line that is one of my favorites. I mentioned it before. I was going to do a toy series of videos on my channel again, and I started off with this toy property because, again, it's one of my favorites, and that's Visionaries. I don't know why. I'm just a big fan of the Visionaries. They were cool. They were knights, the spectral knights, knights of the magical light. I don't know why I liked it so much. Maybe it was just the... Uh, the holograms on their chests. Maybe it was the, you know, the weapons that they held, they had, the vehicles, the futuristic night aspect. I don't know. Something about it was cool when I was a kid. And uh, there is a six issue comic book series that you can find as well. Issue one's not that hard to find. Again, sometimes you can find these in dollar bins. You can keep an eye out for all of them. But issues five and six, six is the last issue, really do well on, on the back issue market. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about like 20, 30 bucks. Well, not like super duper expensive, but still something you want to keep an eye out for if you can find find them but issue one you can even see here you can find online uh for 1050 so there's like ten dollar book if you can find it but dollar bins are really your best bet uh to find something like this for cheap so i found them in dollar bins i recommend you keep an eye out for them as well but if you watch this channel you know i mention these types of books all the time a lot of these books you will see i've picked up dollar bin digging before because this is the stuff i look for i look for these adapted comic book cartoon properties because this is stuff that I remember. It's stuff I like personally. So I keep an eye out for it and I recognize it immediately when I see it. So just sharing that bit of information for you guys, if you're interested as well in these uh, cartoon type properties. So that is my number 10 because again, it's only a six issue series. Didn't last for very long. I don't have any expectations of them really bringing it back despite the fact that they did try to do that crossover with Transformers not that long ago. But eh, who knows? Who knows where we might go to in the future? Okay, so coming in with my number nine selection, the next one I have picked is another favorite end of the alphabet cartoon property, and that is Voltron. Voltron. Who didn't love Voltron? It has been copied plenty of times, especially with you, this younger generation and their Power Rangers. Don't look back to Voltron as being that, you know, joining up the lions that formed you know, Voltron. This thing was awesome. The cartoons were great. The toys were which I did not have. I had like, I think one lion when I was a kid. I did not have all of them. That's, it's just how my parents didn't uh, throw in the cash on Voltron, but I did make sure to get my son a set of Voltron once. Uh, you know, he was a little bit older to play with them, but that was more for me than for him. I can admit that. But that all being said, Ultron, Ultron, Voltron is my number nine pick because again, it's a classic, classic, classic stuff. Now, this is a tough book to find for cheap. This Voltron number one, you can see here, 20 bids on January 26th, got one up to 66 bucks. So this might be a little bit of a tougher one to score if you're looking for it, because again, it's not that easy. And uh, I'm not alone in my fandom for Voltron Defenders of the Universe, but it is a cool one. And I uh, thought it might end up being higher on the list, but when I was going, hemming and hawing, going through what I wanted as my top 10, I decided this was number nine. So number nine, it is. 
to move on down the list to my number eight pick, which number eight 80s cartoon. I don't know why I slotted this ahead of Ultron, but I did. Maybe it was just a gut instinct, and it was still a fun series, and I'm talking about Silverhawks. Do you remember Silverhawks? These guys? Another comic book that's gotten hot the last few months, the last year or so, uh, pulling out of dollar bins and all of a sudden becoming $30 to $50 book. I don't think it should be there, but it is a classic to me. So maybe it isn't out of place getting those prices, uh, but it is one you want to keep an eye out for. Again, just a fun series, some fun toys with the shiny, you know, shininess and the wings. They're Silverhawks. I mean, it's in the name. You, you kind of get the idea just by looking at this cover. If you haven't seen the cartoon before, what I'm talking about or the action figures. But Silverhawks is a fun one. So it, it found its way up to my number eight spot. And as I mentioned, as far as the pricing goes, you can see 30 bucks on January 25th. One of these issue ones sold for. Uh, I think newsstands, for whatever reason, are commanding a little bit of a premium, even though they shouldn't. Because remember, in the 80s, newsstand was, that's right where the shift kind of happened, where everything was newsstands. Because there weren't direct market comic book stores, and really until the 80s, that where there were direct editions. So uh, everything was newsstands, if not mostly newsstands. So uh, don't just get fooled just because of today's uh, tough-to-find newsstands, that all newsstands are tough-to-find and have been tough-to-find. Go go do some research and check out that uh, there's plenty of graphs that give you the idea of uh, and during those mid-80s when that 50-50 split actually uh, goes back to more towards newsstand, uh, you know, being you know, plentiful over the direct editions. Now, moving on, that was our, my, I should keep saying our, that was my number eight pick, which is going to take us to number seven, and uh, number seven on my list is another one, another classic. Uh, I will admit there are some properties I liked more than this one, which is why it's found itself on the second half of the top 10, because I enjoyed another property a little bit more. And they were very, very similar in my mind. And we are talking about Thundercats. Yes, Thundercats. Whoa, a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. Some fun toys. I didn't have as many of these as I did of the other property. We will get to. So that's why, personally, I have this a little bit lower on the list. Well, friends of mine, they had Thundercats and Thundergats or, or their jam. Uh, I occasionally got to borrow. I don't know if you remember the, back in the old days when you would, like, bring your toys onto, like, the school bus. And you would trade a toy with a friend, and you'd borrow a toy for, like, a week, and they played with yours, and you played with theirs. And then, I don't know. Maybe it was just something in my area or something at my school that we did. But I remember, as a kid, bringing in toys. And my mom getting mad, like, no, what if they break? I don't know. But trading toys was a thing when I was a kid. Uh, I don't know if it was for you guys, but memories, right? Anyway, Thundercats. They've redone Thundercats a few times now with animated uh, shows and even the toys. But the classics will always be classic to me. And uh, this book is another one that's gotten pretty pricey over the last year or so. So finding a Thundercats one now, whereas it could have been and has been found in dollar bins, is 90 bucks on January 27th for one of these for a Thundercats, number one. I don't know why all of a sudden the Thundercats, you know, fans came out in droves over the last few months, the last year or so, uh, driving up the price on Thundercats one. But there it is. Thundercats is a pricey book now. This has now become a tough book to find where it used to be. And I remember grabbing a bunch of these for my son uh, in, in dollar bins just for him to flip through. And these were just, you know, his comics. But now some of those are tough to find. And I had to take them back. But even though they're all beat up. This is a, not a super long-running series, but still a series you should keep an eye out for if you're flipping through those cheap boxes. While number one may not be able to be found, you can probably find some of those other issues in there uh, just for fun if you go digging. So number seven, Thundercats. Taking me to number six on my list. Uh, the start of the second half of my top ten. And this is a close one. This was a close call. I thought it would have made the top five because this was another favorite toy line of mine. The cartoon was pretty good, too. And this is Mask, Mobile Armored Strike Command, Command with a K. Yeah, I know. Well, they had to kind of force things to make their acronyms work back in the 80s. And we didn't care. We didn't mind. It was fun. But Mask, fun toys. They're basically toys that kind of transformed or had alternate versions where a car would become like a jet or a you know, motorcycle would become a helicopter or a truck becomes a tank, that kind of thing where the vehicles would transform into another vehicle. And then they came with these uh, little figures, little guys you can actually put inside the vehicles. And uh, they had helmets. A lot of fun. 
a lot of fun on, on this series and this series of toys. And they made a couple of, there was a mini series and that's what this issue one is. I'm showing here is from the mini series. I think it was like three, maybe four. And there was like a ongoing, which I think only lasted like uh, eight or nine issues after that. So again, not a long running comic books for most of these ad adaptations of the cartoons and these toy properties, but still fun things to go look for. Uh, so number six mask for me, this issue one here, again, it's still pretty cheap because there's two number ones to keep an eye out for, but still nine bucks under 10 bucks. You can find this thing for, and again, this is kind of dollar bin digging stuff, guys. This is why I talk about this stuff in dollar bin digging because it's out there. It's out there. You can find it for cheap. Just, just keep your eyes out. Again, if you're interested, I'm not saying this is going to become the next big thing, but hey, who knows? Stranger things have happened, right? Which is going to take us to our top five or my top five. My top five. We are going to start in with number five, DuckTales. I know you were probably expecting some sort of action series, action toys, or something like that to round out the top five, but I don't know. I got to tell you. DuckTales was one of my favorite cartoons uh, when I was younger. It was just fun stuff. I, I loved Scrooge and the, the Beagle Boys, Launchpad. Gizmo Duck was awesome. I don't know. I just, this is I look forward to checking out uh, DuckTales when I got home from school. This was a cartoon that I enjoyed. So uh, I keep an eye out for the comic books. Uh, Darkwing Duck as well. And there are some awesome Darkwing Duck uh, like homage covers to some classic uh, you know, like DC type comics. So uh, one of these days I'll cover those in some sort of video because there's a lot of good ones and some of those get pretty pricey. But I know I've had this DuckTales number one uh, on my uh, dollar bin digging uh, before. So you can still find this again. This is like 15 bucks back in December. You can see one of these sold for. So, so keep an eye out the dollar bins. You can find a DuckTales one uh, pretty easily, but it was just a cartoon that I really enjoyed. And as such, there are comics as well. So I made this number five. Now, coming in at number four, next on my list of my top 10 80s cartoon properties, this is a little tricky one. You might argue this shouldn't belong here, but it's my list, so I'm going to put it here. There was a cartoon, even though the comic series that we also have here didn't align exactly, it wasn't a straight adaptation, they are, are both adapted from the same property, which is why I think it still fits, and like I said, it's my list, so I can do what I want. But I'm talking about Dungeons and Dragons. Something about this silly cartoon, I still look back on fondly. I have the DVD box set somewhere in my house here. Uh, and I want to go dig it out so I can go watch them again. Maybe even share them you know, with my son. But just something about like those kids going on a roller coaster ride and then being whisked off into this fantasy realm. I still like the, the fantasy stuff. Witcher's awesome show. Uh, Lord of the Rings, still favorite set of movies out there. Outside of you know, the Star Wars and the superheroes. Uh, the fantasy realm is right up there for me personally. So that's why I have something like this on the list. And the comic book, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, while it's not an adaptation of that cartoon, as I said, it's still adapted from Dungeons and Dragons. We're still talking about the same character types, the same archetypes, the same, the paladins, the, you know, the sorcerers, the magicians, the thing, things of that nature, you know, centaurs, the creatures, all of it, it still kind of connects. So that's why I have it here. And I still think you should keep an eye out for these. I grab any of these Advanced Dungeons and Dragons comics when I find them in dollar bins. And you can find them. I think there's like a, I don't know if it's 40 or 50 issues. It's a decent run. It was a decent run. But number one is uh does pretty well these days. Not not a ton, but still. 16 bucks ain't bad. One sold for on uh, January 27th. So if you can find one, I'd, I'd say grab it. I'd definitely grab the issue one. And if you like it, grab the other issues as well. Because it's just you know fun stuff to read. If you're into the fantasy, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, type deal this is a book you know a series you should pick up for cheap again for cheap this is for fun that's all this is for this is strictly for fun my list nothing really spec related here uh just kind of fun going through these uh, 80s cartoons that uh got adapted to comic books and i just like them so here we are getting to the top three the top three of my list it was tough. I, I had to uh, kind of fight a little bit going through how I was going to rank these three properties in my top threes, where I was going to slot them. And uh, after some internal debate and discussion with myself, I decided at number three, why Thundercats isn't higher is because I have Masters of the Universe coming in at number three. I had tons of these action figures growing up. Big fan of the cartoon. I think the newer 
Revelations gets a raw deal. It's not that bad. It's not great. It might not be exactly what I wanted, but it's not terrible. And it's not ruining my childhood. Kevin Smith didn't ruin my childhood with Masters of the Universe. I still find it entertaining. Uh, that all said, the original stuff is still a lot of fun uh, to go back to. And I hear talk of them doing an, an ad a live action, live action movie with the kid from West Side Story now for Netflix. Uh, fingers crossed. I mean, it's not going to be hard to top the Dolph Lundgren version, but uh, I really hope they do. I really hope they do because I do like He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And while this is not the first comic for Masters of the Universe, this is the one that I always think of when I go looking. I think of the Star Comics version. I don't think of the DC miniseries, nor am I suggesting going and finding the mini comics that were with the figures. So, Yes, this is not the first appearance of uh, Masters of the Universe, but this is the one, the issue one I think of. So that's why I put the Marvel Stars version in uh, as the one we're going to look at uh, as the reference point. And this book, and you can see, it sells for like 50 bucks these days. So it's not cheap. Again, this is an all time classic. So uh, you got to imagine a number one is going to do pretty well. Uh, and it does. It does. So there it is. My number three Prince Adam, He Man. Masters of the Universe. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so that was our number three, which will take us to our number two. My number two. Number two overall 80s cartoon comic property. Transformers. Yes, Transformers comes as a number two. Absolutely. Definitely right up there. Could be 1A and 1B here when I come up to the top because... Growing up, I mean, outside of like Star Wars movies, Star Wars toys, I mean, there was nothing uh, outside of these two that are, it's going to be, you know, again, 1A and 1B basically for me, but slight, ed slightly edged out Transformers. Awesome toys. I mean, I loved my Transformers growing up and their cartoons are fantastic. The movie is one of the best uh, movies for cartoons out there. You know, you know, cartoon TV show, Saturday mornings adapted into the theaters, like things that happened back in the 80s. How great was that to seeing that uh, Transformers movies in the theater? I don't know. It, these are high points of my childhood that I look back upon fondly. So at number two, Transformers. And this uh, pretty sweet Bill Sienkiewicz cover, too, is not cheap. 100 bucks uh, for one of these, easy, uh, for Transformers, number one. And it doesn't even have to be, like, in 9.8 minty shape. Like, decent-looking copies can sell easily for this price. Uh, so, just a pricey one. Uh, one that you're not going to find really cheap in those cheap bins anymore, most likely. But if you do, good, you know, good on you. But uh, if you want one, it's probably going to cost you these days. And, uh, again, it could be worth it because again i know a lot of people my age or even a little bit younger can might still be recapturing their youth and going back for some of these things just for that uh nostalgia factor so nostalgia hits me hard when i think back on transformers like i said it is one of my favorite toy lines uh ever uh but not number one again maybe one b it's just slightly edged out by my number one overall 80s cartoon property. I mean, you could probably guess it. I mean, it's been sitting right next to me, you know, this whole time we've been doing this. I'm rocking the t shirt and I got my hat. Uh, G.I. Joe, a real American hero. It, it didn't get any better than this for me. I had so many Joes. I had tubs of those three and three quarter Joes with the O rings, tons of weapons and vehicles. I had almost everything except for the USS flag. Like I can't think of a GI Joe toy or action figure. I didn't own, uh, at one time. They're all sadly all gone now. Uh, but Hey, I still have the memories, right? But GI Joe, great cartoon. And, and just like the transformers, that movie was fantastic as well. Uh, introducing Falcon, uh, with Don Johnson voicing him and you got Cobra La, which I know was kind of silly, but still, it was still fun. Uh, the Transformers movie might actually be better to rewatch than the G.I. Joe movie. But that all being said, 1A and 1B, folks, uh, at least in my mind, for my money, uh, my nostalgia, my childhood, uh, it's pretty close. But G.I. Joe's were something special and still are. Uh, and it's why I collect these, you know, black series, the classified series, not black series, the classified series. These are the larger ones. And I know they got the retro tons of stuff uh coming back out and it's tempting to buy it all but you got to make decisions uh you got to make budget decisions i can't buy everything but 
this book is just like Transformers. It's very expensive. Look, five bids, January 28th, 122.50, uh, one ended four. And like I said, with the Transformers, they don't have to be like immaculate shape either. They're just decent shape. We'll get a ton of money uh, or cost you a ton of money if you don't have one. So keep that in mind as you work and, and try to find some of the stuff. If you're interested, again, this is my top 10 list. Uh, again, it's nothing spec related. These are just the top 10 things that I look back on when I think of like 80s cartoon comics. These are the series and toys and cartoons and comics that I think of when I think back to the 80s. Let me know uh, ones that you you know, are a big fan of, because I know your list is going to be completely different than mine, most likely. And I welcome that. I welcome us all to have this discussion, have some comments, tag me on IG. If you have any of these books and I reminded you of them and you just feel like digging them out of your collections. Cause I love to see them. Uh, Cause outside of the number ones that I showed, there's a ton of good issues throughout the series. Like remember that silent GI Joe issue series you got for storm shadow in there, just tons of good classic, classic stuff that we could find. I appreciate you all for stopping by and checking this out and my indulgence into my own personal top 10, but uh, hopefully you still enjoyed it and had fun watching this. And uh, hopefully I brought back some uh, good memories and some nostalgia for you too. And uh, like I said, let me know what ones I might've missed that you would have had on your list. Are you a big Centurions fan? What about Brave Star? I don't know. Maybe you were more of a Gobot guy than a Transformer thing. Like your list could be completely different than mine and that's fine. We all have our own lists. Again, this, this isn't uh, anything more than just a, a little fun look back into our uh, childhoods. So with that all said, hopefully you enjoy the channel. Hopefully you keep telling your friends that we can keep growing this thing. Check out the live shows. Come join us. Have some fun in the live chat because uh, it's always a blast uh, communicating and exchanging with you guys when we talk about all this fun stuff with comics and toys and pop culture and cartoons and movies. So uh, I welcome it and I'm still having fun on the channel. Hopefully you are too. And with that, I will see you guys next time with some more content and I will come up with another top 10 list.